Welcome to the Revelation Bible Study. Tonight we'll begin in chapter 6, or what I like to call, let's take a pony ride. Uh, talking about the horseman tonight, or particularly the white horse. Uh, before we do that, let's go to the Lord in worship. Thanks again to all you guys for all you do, your giving, your support. We love you, but let's go, uh, let's listen to majesty together tonight and worship our majestic king.
So this week as I began my studies again on uh, the book of Revelation, I, uh, I, I'm redoing all my studies. This year you know I'm doing that as my theme for this year is, is going to relook at everything, reevaluate everything. And if you saw Sunday's message, you'll understand uh, one of the reasons why I'm reevaluating. God is uh, doing some things in me, which is a good thing that your pastor is still hearing from the Lord, even though it's not always the best thing that I hear. But uh, Tonight we're going to take a pony ride in chapter 6, so it's going to be a little different. I will tell you now the format's a little different, uh, and then we will go over that shortly. Uh, but uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you again tonight for all you do. Thank you that you are using this church as a beacon, as a lighthouse. God, I thank you that even though we're not worthy, you still use us anyway. Bless our time together tonight in your precious and holy name. Amen. Amen and amen. So as we're looking at this, uh, chapter 6, we know that we're going to get on our 2,000-year-old spyglass because we don't want to look at it from modern times. We don't want to say, well, John saw it like this. We want to try to take ourselves back to those times. But with that also, we want to bring it to the current day. So before we start with verse 1, as I was studying this week, this is what the Lord impressed on me. Uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John. Um, with that being said, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. So while we're getting ready to look into the throne room and the four horsemen and the pouring out of the seals on the earth, we also need to realize that this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which to me is exciting. Uh, I know for some it's scary, and, and watching the news is scary for me. I just prefer to find what's going on right here in the book. Um, but let's start with verse 1, and we'll go here and, and see where God takes us. Uh, and I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, verse 1, and I heard it as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. Now, can you picture yourself there when the seals were being opened? Can you imagine what it was like to be in the throne room of God? There's seven seals on the roll. And as he begins to open them and things begin to be seen and they begin to be shown. And uh, I can't imagine or even fathom what that must have looked like. Uh, but I love it. We use a worldwide view sometimes, and uh, we, we love to see what the world is saying, but let's be honest, the Bible's being fulfilled right before our very eyes, and, and I'm excited about that. Uh, when the Lamb, the revelation of Jesus, when he opens one of the seals, uh, here's what John says. Now I saw. Take note of that. How many times, if you were taking note, did he say, now I saw? I saw I saw, I saw, I saw, and lo, I saw, and behold, I saw, I saw, I saw. So John has seen this with his physical eyes 2,000 years ago or thereabouts. So when we see what he's seen, then we have to understand that it definitely, he did not have all the modern technology that we have, so he's seeing things differently. And he said, I saw the lamb as he opened the seal. And then he said, and I heard. And I, 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 I'm going to chase a rabbit, and then we'll ride the horse. Um, yeah, I know uh, my wife's in the back laughing at me right now, but at least my daughter's not giving me the Easter seal, right? Um, or the seal, or, or, or seal thing going on. Um, John said, I saw and I heard. I saw and I heard. I saw and I heard. And the noise was as a thunder. And one of the four beasts. Let me read the verse again. And I heard when the I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts saying, "Come and see, come and see." We will get into this more after this week because this week's different, as I told you. But we believe that what he's saying, "Come and see," is to look down on the earth and see what's about to happen on the earth, see what's about to take place on the earth. Now remember that Jesus is the only one that can open the scroll. He's the only one worthy. Now we come to our first problematic scripture. 
our first problematic scripture. Up till now, we've kind of been able just to lay right in there and, and go with things, but this is where you're going to have to get involved. This is where, let me rephrase that. You don't have to do that. You just have to die, of course, nothing else. I know some say pay taxes and die, but the truth is you have to die. It's appointed unto man. But I say that because I, this next scripture is problematic. And I'll share with you why it's problematic. Verse 2. And I saw and behold, there he is, I saw again, and behold a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. We're going to have a screen beside me. I'm not sure which side it'll be on, but I'm uh, going to have a screen beside me here now, and it's going to have those things on it. But I want you to picture in your mind, before you see anything else, I want you to picture the white horse. I want you to picture the rider on the white horse. Now, don't, don't type in anything yet or anything like that, but I want you to picture the rider on the white horse. Now, in your mind, I want you to say who it is. In your mind, I want you to say who it is. Who's the rider on the white horse? He said, Behold, and I see a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Who is this rider? Let's look first at Scripture and see just what the Scripture says. You see the slide, right? It says a white horse. The rider had a bow. The rider was given a crown. Or the rider had a crown because the crown was given to him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now if you read Matthew Henry's commentary on this verse or some of the other ones, here's what you would see. You would literally see that this is Jesus riding a white horse. Why? Because let's, let's be real. A white horse, it represents a, a ruler or a leader. Uh, the, they were clothed in white robes. We've read in the first four chapters. They were, they were clothed in white. There was a white stone given uh, in Revelation 19. Jesus is riding a white horse. If you Googled or went to and looked up pictures of Revelation 6 or the four horsemen, probably more than half of the pictures you see would represent Christ with a crown on his head and a bow in his hand and he's going out to conquer and to be conquering and to conquer. So here's where you've got to be involved this week. You don't have to, but I'm asking you to. Who is the rider? Why would I ask you that? There's two options. The rider is the Antichrist something that resembles Christ yet doesn't work like Christ would work or is it Jesus and the reason I ask you to think about this and to meditate on it this week and I'm, I'm going to ask you next week to answer I'm going to ask you next week to answer what your thoughts are and let me explain to you why before we get to anything else, before we even break that down. In fact, this is the only place we're going tonight because I believe this is what the Lord uh, spoke to me. Revelation 19 says Jesus will return on a white horse, white robes, white stones. Commentator Matthew Henry says this is Jesus. Jennings writes this. The commentator Jennings writes, now listen to what he says. The whole context and character of these seals absolutely forbid our thinking of this writer being the Lord Jesus. And, as, and so many affirm his reign shall not bring war, famine, and strife into its train. That is not what Jesus does, right? That's what Jennings says. Again, Matthew Henry, who's a famous commentator over the years, says that it is different. Guzik says that it is not the Christ. Many believe it's the Antichrist. Many believe it's Jesus. In fact, the contrast is so strong here that it's rattled my brain this week because I try to get research from many different sources, and it's rattled my brain how many things, how many people see it differently. So... I want to stop and preach right here for a minute. 
Because I believe there is a key here that the Lord showed me. Are you ready? Are you looking at me? Here's what I believe the key is. I believe with everything in me that who you see Christ as is dictated by who you would see on this white horse. If in your heart and mind, and, and see, you answered, I didn't, you answered, I didn't, but I did this week, I did answer. And here's what we have to recognize. Do we see him as a loving savior? Do we see him as an overcomer, someone who's there for us? Do we see him as, as Papa God and the, and, and the Son Christ? Or do we see him as a conqueror? How well do you know Christ? When the Lord spoke to me about this this week, he said, literally, I said, Lord, we're trying to get through this. And he said, but what are you trying to teach them? I said, uh, Lord, I'm trying to teach them about revelation. And he said, so what is the revelation? And me and him, I guess, sort of go through this. And I said, well, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. And he said, what's well, more important than them knowing me and who I am? Do they know me as the loving Savior that I am? Or in their heart, do they see me as the judge that is out to get them? Or they see me as the one that going, oh, there's a chip. It must be something they're going to sneak in on us. There's this or there's that. And he said, if I sent my son to die on Calvary for you, why would I look for the first opportunity to get you? Why would Jesus look for the first opportunity to get you? To sweep your legs out from right under you? To knock you off the horse? or to, to Why would he be out to get me? He died for me. This week your homework is this. And I'm going to ask you for the first 15 minutes of next week. I'm going to ask some folks to share. Maybe even bring them in and let them share who Christ is to them. Because some of you saw, the moment you saw that and it said he had a crown and a bow and a conqueror. You saw that as Jesus. Maybe that's because you see this as a history book. Maybe it's because you see this as historical value. I don't know. But it took me a long time. And I know people get mad at me when they say, don't talk about love. It's more than love. It's judgment and it's punishment. And, it, and yeah, it is. But it's all wrapped up in God is love. And it took me a long time, even as a pastor, to learn that he loved me. Above all else, he wasn't out to get me. Every time I made a mistake, he wasn't there to hit me with a ball bat. I cannot see Christ coming to conquer. You go, well, he was going after the enemy. That's not necessarily what's going on in the tribulation time. No, the enemy, the enemy is flourishing. So think about this week. Turn off your TV, turn off your YouTube, turn off everything out there and stop for just a minute and go, who is he to me? And I'm going to say this to some of you out there. If all you do is bring up your canned answer, oh, well, he's everything here. You don't know who he is. Who is he when you're sitting and talking with him? Is he your best friend? This is the revelation of Christ Jesus. If everything in the book is, makes me fearful, if everything in the book of Revelation, then I don't know Christ well enough. If I'm terrified of what's to come, I don't understand the revelation of who he is in the midst of this. I don't comprehend who he is, or maybe, just maybe, I see him as the guy that's out to get me when I make a mistake. And I began to meditate on this stuff this week and God began to show me this. And I said, okay, he's on a white horse. That would represent you or our leadership. And then I began to read just straight from the scripture, just straight from the scripture. And it says that he was a rider and he had a bow. We know that Jesus, uh, when he comes at the end of the tribulation, 
that he has a sword that comes from his mouth. We know that, not a bow. Then we see that it says, and he was given a crown. Why would he be given a crown if he's already the king of kings? If he already has his place of power and authority at the right hand of the Father, why would he need to be given, I'm asking you, why would he need to be given a crown? And then it says that he went out conquering and to conquer. Went out to conquer and went conquering. And as the Holy Spirit was dealing with me, I thought, man, that is not my Savior. We know the other three horses of the apocalypse are bad news. We know that. The red, the black, and the pale or green horse. And we'll get into those next week. But I really want you to think this week. Do you really think that he's out to get you? Is he really out to conquer us? Whether, whether you apply it to this scripture or not, who, do, who is he to you? Who is he to you? Who is he to you? Do I not pray as often as I should because I think he's out to get me? Or I think he's going to know every little thing. He knows it anyway, right? Who is he? What is your relationship like with him? This entire book of Revelation starts with these words. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ. And as things begin to be poured out on the earth, before we even begin to break them down, I want you to know who he is to you. If you believe that this is the Christ, cool, believe that. If you believe it's the Antichrist, someone that looks like him, that draws people unto them, then we might be able to say, okay, now all the things that are coming on the earth right now while this pandemic is happening and while we're seeing the Bible fulfilled, all these things might be God's out to get us. So we got to be cautious not to let him sneak something in on us. It's not what he said. What he said was know him well enough that you'll know when there's a fake. See, I don't stress over all these little things that could be coming next, that we have to bind one world government and um, because God said those things are coming. They're coming during the tribulation. Why would I want to go directly against what God said? Maybe it's because I don't know him as well as I should. Paul said to die is gain. To get out of here is a win. And I think about things like, well, the next thing I want to get done. And the next thing I want to get done. And the next thing I'll... Man's days are numbered and they're full of sorrows. But I have an eternal Savior. You know why I believe he says I saw and I heard so many times? Because you're going to know when Christ shows up. Every eye will see. We'll know. We'll know. But if you don't know who he is now, just like Sunday when I was preaching about the disciples did not know who Christ was. When he showed up, they were afraid of him. Maybe he's going to come looking a little different than we think. And maybe if we're honest with ourselves, the way we see him is the guy that's out to get us, to conquer us. That's not who my Savior is at all. I would agree with Jennings here when he says there's no way, paraphrasing, there's no way I can know the Lord and see him as this conquering, destroying the people that love him. Sneaking in. I know we talk a lot about the chip and the mark of the beast and those things and that's a big topic right now. Church, 
If I'm wrong, I'll answer to God for it. But I don't believe it's going to be a thing that says, oh, well, this is this, is this or that. I believe it's going to be defined completely. You're going to follow a world religion and take the mark or you'll follow Christ and not during the tribulation. I do not believe it. Sneak in and go, I didn't know. I didn't understand. I didn't comprehend. If that's the God you see him as, then I want to pray for you. Meditate this week and change your thoughts on who you see him as. Because if all you see him as is the God that's out to get you, I'm not sure that we know him the way we should. And believe me, I've seen him that way many times. I will get back into Revelation next week if the Lord allows. But tonight I want you to meditate on your relationship with him. Who do you know him as? Is he that person you dread talking to or is that person you can't wait to say hi to? watched the movie Overcomer this week and uh, one of the questions that was presented to a man was who are you and he began to say I'm a husband I'm a father I'm a coach I'm this I'm that who are you well I'm a Christian he said really well yeah he said well why didn't you say that first well I could have said it at any point he went it wasn't the first thing in your heart If being a pastor is more important to me than being a child of God, my priorities are all messed up. If every time I see something falling apart in the world, I'm trying to figure out how God's out to get me, my priorities are all screwed up. I've got a God looking for ways to save me, looking for ways to drag me out of the pit looking for ways to deliver me, looking for ways to literally protect me. I can't see him coming the very first thing that they open the first seal and here comes Jesus to conquer. I know we've been taught that and I know it's about 50-50 out there. It's definitely a controversial scripture. But I invite you to share your thoughts this week on this post. You can send them privately if you don't want the world to know. But wouldn't it be amazing if the Holy Spirit dealt with some hearts and they send a message and go, you know, I've seen him wrong for a long time. I need to see him differently. And others would say, oh, I see him as a loving God. There's no way he could be the conqueror. No way. If these truly are the last days, and we believe that we're close. I believe it's probably a little farther off than some think, but that's just my opinion. But if we truly are in the last of the last of the last days, what's going to matter? Is it going to be Bill Gates? Is it going to be Trump? Is it going to be my neighbor next door who needs this Jesus that I've got? What's going to matter is who he is to me right here. In a relationship that's so intense that I cannot wait to talk to him. I do not believe that this pandemic is going to end the world. I believe this pandemic is an awakening for the church to draw ourselves closer to the Christ, the Messiah, the King. I believe that this is our opportunity and window. I believe I'm not the only one preaching this way. 
I believe there's pastors all over the country right now that are pouring out their hearts because God is stirring them. People are like, what's the next step? Do you believe this is that or this is that? I believe Jesus is still on the throne. I believe he's still my king and I believe he's still my savior. I don't believe he's out to get me. He's out to get me there safely with you. If you don't know this Savior, if you don't know this Jesus, now is the chance. And if you do know him, but you've kind of lost it along the way, wow, that was in chapters 2 and 3. Needless to say, I can't get in this book without him messing me up anymore. I just want you to know him as who he really is. And my Bible tells me exactly what he is. God is love. He will judge you. That's why I give you messages like this. Because there is a moment in time when we need to judge ourselves. And we're going to study out these four horsemen and what they mean. But tonight I would ask you this question in closing. Who do you see on the horse? Who do you see in your heart? What is your picture of Christ? Don't go with what traditions told you. Don't go with what the world says. For God's sake, don't go with the latest, greatest news video. John tells us, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Know him. Lost person, know him. Saved person, know him better. Church, let this separation of physical meeting bring a revival that cannot be shut down. A fire that is shut up in our bones that literally sees a nation, a country, and a city called Sweet Home saved for the glory of God in these last days. I love you. We'll start back next week with a few testimonies. Genuine, from the heart. Thursday night, tomorrow night, Miss Mary Lee will be speaking to you. Friday night, we will uh, live uh, screen Mark Scott walking through the word with him. Good Lord willing, Sunday morning, we'll be back with you. I am excited about what God's doing in my life. The stirring in my heart. And I pray that he stirs your heart. Who'd you see? Who'd you see when you saw the white horse? Someone historical or the revelation of Jesus? Father, I pray right now for your people. God, I know it's been short tonight, but I gave them what you asked me to give them. And I want to thank you for breaking my heart. I want so desperately to be like you. And the struggles are real. But thank you for giving me your word to help guide me. Thank you for making it you. I pray right now for everyone that hears this that you would stir their heart to take a real and genuine look at who you are to them. Not what the storybooks say, not what the Discovery Channel says but who you are to them one-on-one, -on -one, forgetting everything that we know and just finding you. Touch bodies, heal lives in your precious name. Amen. God bless you. I'm looking forward to some people messaging me and then us getting you in here with some testimonies. Have a blessed and wonderful day.